our, cor our current foreign policy today has nothing to do with a proactive effort to wage peace. Just as no person should think only of themselves, no generation th should think only of itself. There is nothing about our foreign policy today that, has, that factors in any goal setting, any intentionality regarding a world at peace 25 years from now or 50 years from now. Why is that? It is because it is driven more by corporate profits than it is by any kind of humanitarian or noble or moral goals. We are not currently a champion of democracy around the world. People roll their eyes at that thought, people around the world. We're not champions of democracy around the world anymore. We're not champions of humanitarian values. When I was a child, <clears throat> I used to always hear politicians talk about how American foreign policy would protect our vital national interests. I was so silly. I thought they meant democracy, silly me. More and more, that has not meant protecting democracy. It has meant internationally doing what we do domestically. Our government far too often working to advocate for short-term corporate profits than for the kind of democratic and humanitarian concerns which should be the core of all public policy, both domestic and international. When it comes to our international policy, first of all, our national security agenda is driven more by short-term profits for uh, defense contractors than it is by an effort to wage peace. We have a $750 billion defense budget, but within the State Department, now the State Department is only $40 billion, so that's development and diplomacy and mediation. It's interesting because even Donald Rumsfeld, <clears throat> Secretary of Defense under George Bush, said we must also learn how to wage peace. And General Mattis said before he left the Defense Department that if you're not going to fully fund the State Department, then I will need to buy more ammunition. Now, within the State Department, we spend $17 billion on the USAID, which is humanitarian efforts, and less than $1 billion in the budget. Now, this is very important. This is why I want a United States Department of Peace. You cannot just take medicine. You have to cultivate health. Sickness is the absence of health. Health isn't the absence of sickness. War is the absence of peace. Peace isn't just the absence of war. We're not going to just back ourselves into peace somehow through this endless perpetual preparation for war. A peace building uh, skill is every bit as sophisticated and takes just as much expertise as does the skill necessary for preparation for war. And I have great respect for the US military. But my critique here is not of the military. My critique is of the political decisions that are being made here. Now, when it comes to peace building, there are four factors which, when present, statistically indicate a higher probability of peace and a lower probability of conflict. Number one, expanding economic opportunities for women. Number two, expanding educational opportunities for children. Number three, reducing violence against women. And number four, reducing unnecessary human suffering wherever possible. We should see, and will see if I'm president, large groups of desperate people as a national security risk. Desperate people do desperate things, such as walking across deserts. Desperate people are also more vulnerable to ideological capture by genuinely psychotic forces. So for me, in both domestic and international policy, first of all, if there will be a Williamson Doctrine, it will be that the world will understand that from this point forward, America's greatest ally is humanity itself. And in all public policy, domestic and international, the core guidance is what will help people thrive. That is how to build prosperity, and that is how to build peace. What would help people thrive? Thrive.